Hello and welcome back to the Spotlight of the Spotlight. My name is Lee Colazzo, also known as Mrs. Reader Pants, and this is a weekly spotlight of the brand new books coming out. I release this every Tuesday and you can also find a longer list on my blog at www.readerpants.net. So this video is just my favorite titles from the spotlight. So there are actually more titles on the new release spotlight on my blog that you can look at, but these are my favorites for the week. Um, I have, let's see, 11 titles for you today in this spotlight. So this one is a quite good, um, I think maybe my biggest one yet so far for the videos. So let's get started. Starting out with young adult titles today, this is grades seven plus, and I have five young adult titles for you. Our first YA title today is called Painted Devils. This is by Margaret Owen, and it is the sequel to Little Thieves, which came out in 2021. I do not normally include sequels in the main part of my spotlight, but I do occasionally do it when the sequels are getting huge reviews and the previous one also got huge reviews, which is the case for this book and for Little Thieves. This got three starred reviews and is recommended for grades nine through 12. This is a fantasy book and I'm not going to go into the summary in case you haven't read Little Thieves, but um, know that it's out there and available and will make a great addition to your library. Our next two YA books deal with mental health and crime. So our first one is Forever Is Now. This is about a 16 year old black girl who is already suffering from anxiety, but she breaks up with her girlfriend and it's very traumatic. And then shortly thereafter, she witnesses a violent act of police brutality on another black girl. So this has, she's already dealing with anxiety, but th this event causes her to, um, not want to leave the house at all. She feels very unsafe and she actually doesn't. She gets um, diagnosed with agoraphobia and most of the book is set in her house. She can barely even make it past her backyard. So lots of social media in here um, and activism. Uh, she gets involved in activist movements even though she's not able to leave the house just yet. So um, this is Publishers Weekly and Kirkus starred and it is recommended for grades seven through 12. Our next YA book also deals with mental health, and this is Ever Since by Elena Brusas. Um, this is starring a, a female narrator who has several really good supportive friends, but she doesn't have the best reputation at school. She has a reputation for being easy and um, for getting involved in drugs and things like that. She doesn't worry about it too much because her close friends are very supportive of her. However, one of her friends leaves town for the summer and she starts getting close to her friend's boyfriend. She thinks she may even be falling for him. Um, that also coincides with her finding out that the boyfriend has a 11 year old sister who is potentially being groomed to, um, by the same guy that has been sexually molesting the main character for most of her life. So she's got to, and she's never said anything about it, and she just tries to avoid the guy, but he's an upstanding member of the community and also friends with both of her parents who are kind of neglectful and self-involved. Um, so she just does her best to avoid him, but now she feels like there's an 11 year old girl involved and she may potentially become a victim and she needs to make sure she stands up to the community. Um, this is about not being believed as well. There, there is that element of it. Um, and the ramifications of sexual abuse. This is rated for grades nine through 12 and is book list starred. Okay, our next book for YA is The Luis Ortega Survival Club. This is by the same author that wrote The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School last year, which won a lot of accolades. Um, it was a Pura Belpre nominee, it was a Goodreads Choice Award nominee for YA Fiction, and it was a National Book Award finalist. So this is the same author, so we expect great things from, from this book. Uh, this is about a young lady who is autistic and selectively mute. She's Mexican-American, and she is a student in high school. Um, she doesn't have just a lot of friends, um, but the this popular boy starts paying attention to her, and she's kind of excited about that. 
Um, she ends up at a party and he rapes her. She, she says, I didn't exactly say no, but I didn't exactly say yes either. So that's rape. Um, so she's uh, kind of mortified about it and she goes to school and it turns out there's all these rumors now about her being easy. Um, well, there's, she goes one day and finds a note on her locker and it is from other girls who have formed a Luis Ortega survival club who have also been sexually molested by the same person. So um, this one is recommended for grades eight plus is by a debut author and it is a graphic novel that is realistic fiction and historical fiction because it is set in a small town in New York in the 1980s. So this is semi-autobiographical, um, not quite a memoir, but it is based on the author's life. This is about Claire who is a teenager and Claire is not sure if they are where they fall between a boy and a girl identity. So Claire is um, dealing with a lot of uh, difficulty at school um, with bullying and things like that. So Claire deals with that by um, drinking a lot of alcohol. Ultimately something happens and they are put into court ordered alcohol rehab. Um, so I love this cover and make sure you notice the tires on the bicycle there. That's very cool. Um, this got three starred reviews and is recommended for grades eight and up. Okay, next up we have our middle grade titles. This is titles recommended for grades three through eight. That is a range. So if one reviewer recommends grades three through seven and another reviewer recommends grades five through eight, then the range is three through eight. And you do tend to see ranges a lot in the middle grade section. Um, I have four middle grade titles for you today. Our first middle grade title today is from a huge author for middle grade and YA books, Gary D. Schmidt. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know exactly who this is. Um, this is The Labors of Hercules Beale, and already you can tell that there is a mythology reference here. Um, the Greek mythology is my favorite thing to read about and to teach with kids. Um, so this is about a young boy named Hercules whose parents died last year in a car accident. He is now being raised by his older brother. So again, we see a theme of older siblings raising younger siblings. We saw that last week with another book. Um, so he's dealing with a lot already. He's just in middle school. So um, he's in seventh grade and he gets an assignment from his seventh grade teacher to write, uh, to, it's a, like a year long assignment to apply Hercules 12 labors to his daily life. And he has to, for each labor, write a 150 word essay. So the story, it's, it's a novel, but it also has the actual essays that he writes and then the teacher's comments to the essays as well. This one's gonna be a big hit. It got four starred reviews and it is recommended for grades three through eight. Our next middle grade novel is Shakti. This is um, gonna have a lot of Indian mythology references. This is a graphic novel and fantasy, um, and it is about a young lady who is starting yet another school. She's moved around a lot, and this time her new school is in Amherst, Massachusetts. She discovers a group of mean girls, bullies, um, who are in the woods and they are conjuring spells. And so she decides to call on the uh, one of the Indian mythology goddesses, Durga Ma, um, to help with that. But instead of Durga Ma, she calls forth Durga's twin sister, Kali, and Kali is the, a god of destruction and chaos. So obviously that's not gonna help the situation very much. Um, this one got three star, sorry, not three, two star reviews from BCCB and Publishers Weekly, and it is recommended for grades three through eight. Next up, we have Second Chance Summer. This is not to be confused with Morgan Matson's Second Chance Summer, which is a YA novel. This one is about two friends who are no longer friends, they're middle schoolers, but they're going to the same summer theater camp and they end up put together in the same cabin. So that's already kind of setting them up for not a fun summer. These two girls are very, very different and I love how they've got the nuances of friendships playing out in this book. 
We have one friend who is um, Jewish. She's kind of chubby. Um, she has a condition called dyspraxia, which causes her motility issues. Um, she's meek. Uh, she doesn't stand up for herself. The other friend is glamorous. She's a child actress. She is popular and she's very outgoing. So two very different personalities, but they did used to be friends. So they're going to theater camp together and they're rooming together. And as luck would have it, the, the theater production for the summer is Wicked, which is based on The Wizard of Oz. So one friend is going to end up playing Galinda, who grows up to become the Good Witch, and one former friend is going to be Elphaba, who is, grows up to be the Wicked Witch of the West. This is booklist starred and is recommended for grades three through eight. Our last middle grade title this week is Mateo. This is by the author of The Civil War of Amos Abernathy, which came out last year. And this is a retelling. It's a magical realism retelling of Pinocchio. So we have Mateo here. He's an 11 year old boy and he has never felt like um, he fits in with the other kids at school. He is ostracized and he's bullied and it's just really tough for him. He was adopted at birth and he doesn't um, know anything about where he came from or his birth family. Well, one day he's, he tells a lie and he really finds out that he's really not like these other kids when tree branches start growing out of his chest. So uh, there we have the retelling of Pinocchio. This is all tied to a tree that is in the center of town that is rumored to have magical properties. And um, so this I think will be extremely easy to book talk with students in middle school. They know the story of Pinocchio and it sounds kind of fun with the tree branches growing out of his chest. Um, this is for grades three through seven and it is book list starred. And that brings us to our picture book titles. These are generally recommended for grades pre-K through five, but as we all know, picture books can be used for a wide variety of grade levels and purposes. Um, this week, the picture books did not grab me quite like middle grades and YA did. They were excellent uh, middle grade and YA books, but um, I do have a couple of picture books to talk about today. Our first picture book title this week is by Adam Rex. He is a major author for children's books and some of his books include School's First Day of School and On Account of the Gum, but there are many, many, many others. Um, I love this cover. These aunts look really fun. There are four aunts coming to visit a family, and um, it, this is great if you like books like um, Pair This with Cynthia Rylance, The Relatives Came. Um, this is about a very um, group of exuberant aunts who are diverse, and I love the detail here on the cover. You can see that these are going to be some highly energetic aunts coming. This is recommended for grades preschool through three, and it got three starred reviews. Our last book for this week is The Good Hair Day. This is by the author of Teddy's Favorite Toy and Wombat the Reluctant Hero. And this is about a young boy who is having his birthday coming up. And more than anything, he's always wanted long, luscious hair. Um, he can't get that though because he knows that boys don't have long hair and men don't have long hair. But he has a family who is understanding and gives him a birthday present that will help him have the long hair that he wants. This one is Publishers Weekly and Kirkus Starred and is recommended for preschool through grade three. Okay, that's a wrap for our new release Spotlight of the Spotlight for May 23rd, 2023. Remember that the entire new release spotlight, there are other titles that I have spotlighted this week, are available on my blog at www.readerpants.net. And in that um, post, there is a downloadable Google Slides presentation. It's totally free and it is editable. What you can do with that is add it to your Google Slides and then you can show it on a loop. Uh, I've got directions on how to do that in the slideshow. Um, on a TV in your library and your students can see what's coming out that's new and that can help you kind of see what they're interested in that's coming up. They will tell you, trust me. That is editable so you can um, download it and then like if you're just elementary, you can edit out the YA titles and the whatever middle grade titles you don't want. So. The new release spotlight goes back over a year on the archives on Mrs. Reader Pants. So I will link all of that 
below for you in the description. Our next spotlight will come out next Tuesday for the last spotlight of May 2023. Please be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next week.